Good morning. This is Bill from Out of Europe in Naples, and today I'm lucky enough, you know, in fact, it's been a pretty lucky week because I've had more than a couple of my favorite cars, and today is a bit of a uh, takes the cake. This is, and this car combines a few of the things that I really like about cars, which I'll get into. Uh, this is a 2005 Mercedes Benz E320 CDI. Uh, now, what CDI signifies is that this car is a diesel, and this was the first, you know, sort of return to diesel passenger vehicles that Mercedes-Benz had done in many, many years. You know, we were all big fans of those diesel Benzes of the 80s, uh, you know, mainly because they're completely indestructible. They're built like tanks. Uh, you know, so many of them are still on the road today. They took the motor out of an old U-boat, stuffed it in a car, and just everybody went nuts. But, well, not everybody, because they did have some things that, uh, you know, some people didn't like. One of them is diesel clatter. Another thing is they were slower than a freight train getting rolling. And, uh, you know, they did tend to smoke when they were a little bit out of tune. Uh, not to mention back then, the you know, the gas that came out of the pumps, you mostly had to go where the big trucks went and your hands ended up smelling. And, you know, you really did pay a lot to have your incredibly warm and friendly, uh, you know, old Mercedes diesel uh, E-Class. Well, now you don't. When this thing came out in 06, uh, it was a real game changer and a sign of many more diesels to come. Uh, you know, of course, being, you know, uh, an emissions conscious country, even in 06, uh, it was illegal in five states. And I think you should find those five states, figure out which ones they are and never live there. Uh, but, uh, you know, 45 states welcomed it aboard, and here it is. Uh, so again, 05, and let me give you another thing that this car, this particular car, uh, you know, it does to appeal to me. Uh, this is a one-owner car owned by a retired German engineer. I, I'm lucky enough that we seem to get a few of these things from time to time. And you can always immediately tell the difference uh, on a car that has been owned since new by a retired German engineer versus a car that's been owned by just about anyone else. I mean, they are obviously very specifically minded, you know, conscientious people when it comes to car care. And this car is no exception. It is absolutely mint from front to back. It has been maintained in every way. And uh, in so, uh, so many ways, it's like having a new 2005 CDI. So anyway, let's get started. I'm going to try and beat the sun here. Maybe this be an abbreviated video. Uh, okay, back here you can see that it has a very large trunk. Uh, that was uh, something that sort of began with this W211 chassis E-Class. The trunk is enormous. Additionally, this does have the optional fold-down rear seating. You pull those guys, the rear seat's going to pop forward. And if you need to, you know, bring like piano keyboards with you, it's not going to be a problem. you got a ton of room back here. Uh, being Germans, you get a little bit of a German sticker here. Uh, he also had a set of new floor mats that were just basically sitting back here. No good reason. There they are. Didn't use them. Here they are. I gotta love them for that kind of stuff. Uh, you got a great little net thing over here with the books. You see all my crap there in the Perrier water. Don't make fun of me. It's delicious. And uh, anything. Anyway, everything lovely back here in the trunk. You can also see in the bumper the little uh, reverse sensors. So this one was equipped with what they call the Parktronic, uh, which is basically just a backup beeper. All right, let's have a look under the hood before we get inside. So to me, this is what makes this engine absolutely fantastic. Mercedes eventually went to a V6 diesel, and you know, that's fine and all great and fine, but this inline six engine is just absolutely amazing. Uh, CDI stands for Common Rail Direct Injection. Uh, it was a very advanced diesel for its time, even for today. Uh, it doesn't use any of that urea stuff, which I, I don't want to even know what that's made from. Uh, you know, I just don't. And uh, this thing is just awesome. Now, the reason that it doesn't clatter and smoke and, you know, do miserable things uh, is, well, there's a variety of engineering in it. The most, the most 
common bit of engineering, the most notable bit of engineering, is that the fuel rail is pressurized to like 23,000 PSI, which is absolutely incredible. It's like the depths of the ocean. And it injects just the tiniest bit of diesel uh, into the combustion chambers before, you know, the big explosion comes from compression a minute later. And what that does is give a uh, sort of progressive combustion explosion, uh, which makes it uh, just that much smoother, that much less clatter, and, uh, you know, a very, very proper motor. So even though there is a diesel in this thing, you're not going to get that big gek, 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 gek with the thing shaking, smoke coming out the back. Uh, you know, they put a lot of extra sound deadening in this thing. And because of the low rev range that diesels have inherently, uh, it's actually quieter than the gas model at higher speeds and not at all much uh, louder than it at lower. You can hear it outside the car. You sure can't hear it in. So it is an incredibly refined diesel motor uh, to drive. And that is mated to uh, an 06. What would have this been? Five or six, uh, seven speed? Either a five or a seven speed. We'll figure that out when we drive it. Don't remember when they made the switch, but I think it was 07. So probably a five speed automatic that's equally bulletproof. Uh, now, I'm not real big into diesels. I don't know much about them, but our, well, that's, I know little about it. I don't know specifics. Uh, one of our technicians told me the injection pump on this thing is the same one they use in these big Cummins diesels and that it's the greatest one that was ever put in a, a diesel engine. So I'll take his word for it. But uh, I do know the engineering on this motor is fantastic. The clear bra that the guy had installed. I think he was an engineer for Bosch. And uh, man, does it show. Look at the nitrogen-filled Michelins it came in with. The uh, all-original brilliant silver metallic. Ah, God, I just love the way these guys look after their cars. Very precise people. Okay, beautiful leather seats in the back. Uh, silver and black, great color combination for a diesel. Uh, very, very nice inside. Actually, take that, is that leather? Is that Tex? Yeah, it's leather. Okay, I think it's leather. Anyway, doesn't matter. Either way, uh, it's uh, fantastic inside. You can see the lovely door panel treatment with the bunched leather. It's got rear side airbags. It's got nice chrome trim around the wood. Uh, this one has the uh, sunshade package, so it's got the rear shade and the two sides. All very nice and proper. And you get that nice thud. I like little touches like the chrome on top of the door handle. Very, very nice. Uh, you know, this was a beautifully styled car, this W211. And uh, so many good cars are based on it today. Underneath this thing, this is basically a Chrysler 300, for instance. Uh, that's the car that they used to build that. So, uh, you know, terrific platform on this car. Okay, up front, again, everything lovely, very Teutonic, very proper. Uh, you can see this is the era of Mercedes where they got uh, as much into styling as they did into quality. You've got this swoopy curved dashboard with the lovely wood trim, uh, very nice stylized wood in the door panels. You've got your power memory seats on both sides, your power mirrors, your power windows. Uh, again, lovely bunched leather. A uh, little open mat pocket there at the bottom with the trunk release. Uh, just all very nice and tight, good fit and finish. Uh, just a super nice place to be. Uh, let's hop in. So I'm going to leave the door open when I fire it up. You can hear just how quiet it is for a diesel. All right, and everything coming to life. I like the way the Parktronic self-test. Check that out. Yeah, very, very cool. Uh, oh, yeah, there's our tele-aid. That's common. You know, if you turn off that tele-aid thing, it's basically uh, uh, Mercedes-Benz version of OnStar. You get a stupid warning. We'll have to program that out. You know, listen to that, man. That is nothing like those 123 diesels that I used to drive all over. It is quiet, refined, smooth. You're getting none of that gak, 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 gak. Maybe a little bit when it's cold, but so little. Just enough to make you happy about it. Uh, get a little climate control going here. It's a bit chilly here. Sorry, it's a bit, uh, been miserably hot this morning. All right, let's get things rolling. Okay, here we have a very nice leather steering wheel. It's got multifunction controls for, uh, you know, this goes through the driver information and settings. This goes through the, uh, the volume. If it had a phone, which it doesn't, you'd be hanging up over here. Uh, when I got this thing, it was all in German. 
and I don't obviously speak German, so it was very tough for me to sort of figure out how to reset the damn thing and get it into English. I'm never a German speaker around when you need one. Uh, but anyway, by pressing these little page buttons, you can see I can go through and uh, check all these little features, and then the arrows go from there and give you different features. Uh, all very nice stuff. So you get a little driver information center there. Uh, you've got three very simple gauges, one of them being a clock, uh, the other one being the tack. And, you know, diesels have been around a long time. In fact, uh, I think Rudy Diesel invented them in like 1894 or something. And Mercedes, they put the first diesel in a car back in 1936. So uh, Mercedes is, hey, I'm out of experience with diesels. They've been loving on them for a long time. Uh, anyway, you can see it as a 4,500 RPM uh, red line, which is, you know, inherent to diesels. They don't rev that high, and uh, they make all their power down in the low end. In fact, this thing has 369 foot-pounds of torque, which uh, back in 05 was the thing of Mustang GTs. Uh, they didn't have that much, so uh, it will launch itself from a red light with no issues at all, and maximum torque's being created by the time it hits 2,000, so pretty cool stuff. Uh, anyway, everything lovely here. You got your cruise control, you've got your automatic headlamps, some parking brake release down there. Here's a very lovely climate control, hot side, cool side, everything very nice. Cold air conditioning, good heat. Uh, this one does have the Mercedes-Benz command unit with navigation. Uh, for 05, it's pretty good advanced navigation that looks nice. Uh, again, being Germans, we got two keys, everything perfect there. Uh, you get this fantastic little, I haven't even touched that, but I'm sure it works, and it does. Fantastic little secret compartment where the uh, uh, six CD changer ends up underneath. Lovely stuff. I also have probably a true ashtray. Uh, this is a non-smoker car, but uh, in 05, the Germans were probably still smoking. Uh, you can see all the wood is in lovely condition, even on the shifter here. You get in a lot of these uh, sort of early 211 cars. All this is faded to white or gray and cracked and nasty looking. Uh, you can just tell this thing has been garaged and kept lovely since new. Here's the rear sunshade. If I press that, you see it comes shooting up in the back window. So now, uh, you know, with those side screens and the rear screen, your rear seat guys are going to be all very uh, chipper and shaded. Uh, what else do we have over here? We've, they, these will release the rear headrest. This tells you the passenger airbags off. This is a, just unlock and unlock switch. Uh, ESP, electronic stability program. That is, uh, you know, a traction control that works well. I don't know why they give you an off button. It's just really like almost a dummy button. You can you, you hit it, right? You get a yellow triangle and you're thinking, okay, now I'm going to go do smoke shows and burnouts in my diesel. Yeah, the minute it all starts breaking loose, the thing kicks back on. So though you don't know what you're doing and, you know, sort of takes control like a big German nanny. Uh, anyway, you've got your audio, of course, your AM, FM. Uh, no SAT in this one. Your navigation. Uh, no tell. A little too early for Bluetooth. And then, of course, you can get into your settings and whatnot. This is where I had to figure out how to do it not in German. Uh, over here, you've got a little place to put sunglasses or magazine for your 9mm. Uh, what do we have? A, a touch-up paint again from the Germans. The books were in the back. There's more books here. Uh, the way this guy maintained the car was just fantastic. Uh, over here in the shifter, lovely to use and operate. Nice leather boot, nice wood. Uh, you see you've got the C and S comfort and sport buttons. Actually, this is going to be good. We'll see how many gears we have. One, two, three, four. You can see them coming up there. See, th one, two, three, four, D. Okay, so this is a five-speed automatic. Uh, we're going to set it into comfort mode. Now we're in sport mode. Nice. This will turn off the partronic. Uh, if we want to get our cup holders, just roll that nice little wooden panel back. You're good to go. Uh, up here, you've got um, the Audi have a self-dimming mirror with home link garage doors. You got this big power sunroof, lovely headliner in great shape. Uh, again, to get one of these unmolested one owner German diesel Mercedes, is it 95,000 on the clock? I mean, on this car, that might as well be 25,000. It will go for a lot longer than that. And you can see that the fuel is almost full. Well, get used to seeing that because the fuel mileage on these things is epic. Uh, you're talking like high 20s in the city, high 30s on the highway. Incredible for such a stout, you know, sort of heavy midsize sedan. Really terrific fuel mileage. 
All right, let's go for a spin. And of course, this is really where it gets different from those early Benzes in terms of the power and the, um, you know, the way it's quiet and nice and lovely. <laughs> turbo kicks in. It's a variable uh, speed turbo in this thing. It changes its level of boost to uh, suit the engine. Very, very nice. You know what I'd like to do with this thing if I owned it? I'd probably put smokestacks on it somewhere. I'd, I'd get those mud flaps in the back that have that, uh, you know, rather shapely uh, uh, check at the bottom. Uh, you know, probably some sort of bumper sticker like, how do you like my driving? You know, call 1-800-EAT-YOU-KNOW-WHAT. Uh, I could have a lot of fun making this a real diesel. <laughs> Man, feel that torque. Nothing, and that was coming out, that was sport mode. Nothing, nothing like the early Mercedes diesel. I mean, this thing just flies, and it continues like a freight train all the way up to like 140. <laughs> Excuse me. I mean, it is such a different world than the, uh, than the diesels of the 80s. Also, the last inline six in anything, diesel or otherwise, in a Mercedes. So, a very important engine uh, in terms of, uh, you know, ending a fantastic era. Uh, it's so nice to open the hood and see an inline six and not, you know, this cost saving, crash worrying space V6 thing. I mean, the inline six is just so terrific. The steering is nice and nimble. The feel is heavy, but not too heavy. And we hammer it again. I mean, fantastic. It's actually quicker to 60, significantly so than the gas model. So uh, the days the crappy diesel are over, or at least the slow, smoky, clattering diesel are over, and uh, this car ushered them all in. So what a terrific piece. 2005 Mercedes-Benz E320 CDI. Uh, this one, one owner, German-owned, to the point of, you know, again, irritation. You'd be irritated by these people. Uh, but God bless them for keeping their car this way and uh, terrific machine terrific machine I have to say this week it's like a several cars that I would own personally and here's another one man could I own this thing all right there it is so if you have an interest give us a call 239-649-7300 on the web at mercedesexpert.com thank you so much for having a look we appreciate it we'll see you with the next one take care